Today we're decorating a junk journal with lots more than 10 page ideas and a free guide to make things easy. Three weeks ago I made this junk journal in a step-by-step -step tutorial adding the signature and creating some fun page folds. You quite rightly told me that we need to follow through and decorate this which is exactly what we're going to do today. My three step guide will give you lots of ideas and inspiration and help you decorate your journal but more importantly it will do it in a way that allows you to use your own supplies and do it in your own style. We'll create a base layer on the pages using paper in different ways, maybe paint and some stamps. For the main course we'll build out the pages with ephemera like lovely pockets, flip flap envelopes, maybe tags and journaling cards. And as a top level detail, we'll add some extra elements, something that really finishes it off. I will be using ephemera today that I've already made to speed things up, but I have a playlist link below with videos that will help you make any element that I use today. The journal that we're decorating today is just made from book pages, so very basic supplies. And it has 12 pages here and 12 pages here. So there were 12 sheets of paper originally introduced as a signature and it already has some interesting folds. So when I put the pages of the signature together, I shared a few of the page folds that I typically use. And that means we've already got spaces for things to go in like tags and journaling cards. But we've also got some beautiful book pages in here too. I've got some old music paper here. I've got some botanical images. It's just already a thing of beauty. But what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of a structured approach because that's how I like to do things, just to make things easier, using basic supplies to fill this out a bit. I'm not going to fill every page. It's not creating spreads on every page but it is taking it to the next stage. And I like to begin by just taking a moment to think about a few aspects before I dive in and do the decoration. I think about who the journal owner will be, its purpose, a bit about style and a bit about colour palette. So I'm thinking about a friend who will use this in a very ad hoc way, maybe adding a bit of ephemera, maybe sitting and writing a few thoughts and notes in the garden over the summer. I want this to be interactive and fun, that's the style, and I feel like I want some of these greens to follow through as a colour palette. So what sort of attributes do you want in your journal before you dive in and do? If you think about that, it will help you get a more cohesive end result and something that you're really, really happy with. As we move through each of these steps, you might want to think about these as the menu in a restaurant. You don't have to eat everything on the menu. You can add a few ideas of your own, but these are just starter, main course and dessert suggestions to give you some inspiration and help you build out your journal. So let's begin with the starter, and that is about creating a base layer. And what we're going to do is add texture, colour and interest on some, but not all of the pages. And I know that might mean that we need to grit our teeth and cover up some of the beautiful pages that are already in, in here. But that is part of the process. I love it. I love collecting beautiful book pages and putting them in as a signature, but we might want to cover up some aspects too. And again, to make things easy, what I've done is split creating the base layer into using things to do with paper, things to do with paint and things to do with stamps. It just makes it a bit easier to do. And I thought I would kick off with getting some four by three pieces on here. In fact, I'm going to have a go at any of these elements just as one batch of activity. I have a ridiculously overflowing tub here and I just stuff my four by threes in. I'll pull some out. Now thinking about this, it's not four by three, but that will help. What I want to do is create some little spaces for someone to write. That's too big, but I might use it later. I've got scrapbook paper in here. I've got, ooh, got squared paper. 
nice pattern paper. So I've already got some cute little 4x3 components cut out. And these are in pale colours, which makes it easier to write on them. Some of them use scrap paper, you can see that's just scrap squared paper. And that's an approximation, but that will do as well. So I'll grab a few of those and get going. I think kicking off is probably the hardest thing. I don't want too many of any one element because as you can see we've got quite a few ideas to draw on. So I'm starting with gluing some 4x3 paper pieces to create areas for writing and I'm going to add some borders with pencils. So I've got my glue stick. Maybe use a glue stick today rather than watery glue just to avoid ripples in the paper. So this is a pull-out type, in fact, I think I'll have the word Thumbelina preserved. I'll put a piece there. I'll come back and go around with a border with pencils later. The other thing that these little 4x3s do is add a bit of strength to some of the pages. Now, I think I'll add that one jutting over the page. When I was putting this video together and just thinking what to do I did realise you can't do one of these prescriptively and by that I mean I think you've just got to gather some of your supplies and get in the zone but I do feel like a little bit of supportive guide a bit of method really helps me focus more on the creativity than having to think about what comes next so for me it helps me be creative quite like that sticking out I can see a green one down here and I also like the squared paper. If I had squared paper I would want that to contrast with what's behind so maybe that would be quite good. I think actually green and green are quite like that. I'll get one up there and I do need to be careful not to overdo it in the early stages so don't get full on your starter so you haven't got enough room for the main course. So maybe have that just up there. Let's still see his nose. And we can go over these if we want to. So with the mats, that's perhaps enough. I like to take my pencils. These are watercolour pencils. And I'll pick a colour that goes with what I've glued down. Maybe a brown, that's a nice dark brown, and I'll just give that a bit of emphasis. You can see I'm quite scribbly. Let's find the others that I did. There's one. This just adds a bit of emphasis and it makes the mat look like it was intentionally placed where it is. That's a nice nice olivey colour. When you come to write in a place that's got a border around it, I think it just feels a bit nicer. It feels like the, the page is listening to you. You were meant to be writing there. Okay, and as these are watercolour pencils, I will just release the pigment to take a little bit of water you could go around with a pen, you could go around with paint, you could leave it and not do anything at all. I just find this a bit of fun. My principle, I suppose, that I try to apply is can I create something that's exciting and unexpected on the page but still complementary? So trying to keep some of that theme together. So I've got green in there, which I really like. I'll go back to this one and add a bit of green around this. So there's a few ideas for the basic mats. Should we tick things off? That always feels good too, doesn't it? ka -ching. Add some background pages with Amazon packing paper. So let's have a go at that. I've got some ready. So a while ago, I created some packaging loveliness, some with green, some with gorgeous gold. So I'm going to use a little bit of this again Let's not go overboard and cover up too much, but let's build it out. I'm going to really struggle covering that up. I'm just going to say it now. I 
cover up some of this. I like the fish. Let's a little bit on here. And what this process also means is when you're putting book pages into your signature, if you only have some that are maybe not absolutely beautiful vintage or, you know, they're just modern book pages, that's fine too because we are going to augment them with extra elements. I like to vary, so not have maybe three pages on the trot with the same item. So spread them out. And if you, if you need to cover up some images that are already pretty well, you know, so be it. That is what we're doing. I love the gold on this. I like to add gold to my collage paper because it's a neutral colour. And I do like making it in gold and green. I use green a lot in my junk journaling. I think it's fresh and beautiful, just really nice. Now, although I want to put that there, I'm not going to have it opposite the page here. So let's turn a few pages. Put a lot of green in this. I don't know. Oh. I also say every now and again, I definitely struggle. I could have some overlapping already. So let's get just a little bit over the corner there, like that. Got some blankness here, just a little bit down here. I'll do a bit of collaging and build it out. It won't be lonely and sitting on its own. Obviously very cost effective when we use our packaging paper from any parcels. Do you use your packaging paper in your junk journal? I just pulled a few random pieces out. As you can see they've come out in neutrals, pale greens, There's a little bit of artwork there that I might rip up. I've got some Shakespeare pages, children's books, scrapbook paper, tiny bit of digital. I think this can be a columnar piece. So what I mean by that is, I think this can be, this could be a piece I think I will do. I want some rectangular places for someone who likes writing lists. I find lists very cathartic. So I've just folded back a sheet at the top, just about an inch or so. I didn't want to cover up all of this. And I really like the way the blue works with the blue. So I've literally just folded the top back and now I've got a space for someone to write over the top there. I want some other little bits just to enhance the pages. I think it can become quite an organic process, this. I might do something with that, something with that, something with some music paper. And I do think that it's the, the love that we have for paper that truly comes through when we start a decorating process like this. No two journals will ever be the same when you follow this approach. None of your journals will ever be the same as anyone else's. Just a little bit down there. And maybe a little bit over the top. That can go on there. It always looks better when you've got a grouping. Just pinch some other pieces. Oops. That's asking for something. I've got just a piece of scrapbook paper here that's clearly got half of a stamp on. But I like the spots. They're kind of gentle. So just build that out. Maybe add a bit of the packaging paper too. So don't feel that you need to stick to every point and finish it before you move on to the next. If you get that inspiration and you want to add something, then just do it. Some people like to write more than others, so having in mind whoever it is, is quite helpful. I've got ideas for the cover, so I'm not going to use that. I think I'll put, put that on there, maybe as a tuck spot. So here we go, here's the variation. So I like the idea of a space to write, 
but I feel like that would just work well as a little tuck spot down there. So I'll use that for that. You can write on it and you can tuck something in. So we don't need to be a slave to the method, it's just something to help. Okay. Now I really like this text on here. I think the paper's beautiful. I think that is the Dickens sheet. So that's a book page from the 1800s. So what I'm going to do again is add a piece without covering it all up. So I've just got a little hinge here, a flap, and I'll just add some glue on there. Get that on there, which means I've got space to write here. There's a flap, and I've not covered up all of this. I like that. I've got some papers here that are just the result of having it on my desk and painting. Of obviously, all of the oh, really old old paper there in that. The, the results of our creative process, which makes it personal again, doesn't it? Add your personality. Don't like the square end. That's better. So we're starting to build it out. It's feeling like we're in the flow. Don't stop and think too much. Do whatever you feel in the moment. Papers don't need to be tidy. Do a bit more of that. Fold over at the top. And again, oh, let's try swapping to my Uhu. All my glues seem to be empty. I think I'll have that at the top because there's no way I'm covering up for a list all of that. I will make that a bit prettier later. So I happen to have a batch of circles that have been cut out of, I think these are old birthday cards, maybe magazine covers. A few squares here. Again, I think from scrap paper or cardstock in some way. I don't like, that's too bright for me. I'm not doing that. A bit of grey. Okay. So again, maybe just that's a bit dominant, so I'm going to reduce the size, tear that down. Glue stick number 972. And I think I'll have that just jutting out on a page. So let's pick one. That's quite a wide one already. That could have a bit more activity on it. So that can just go there. So I've got some scalloped edge. This was a punched piece of paper, starting to feel it. Don't have to use the other half, let's try. So this is just regular white paper. I'm not worried that it's pure white, I don't want it to stay white because at a later stage I know that I'm going to add colour with maybe some paint on it, we'll see what we can do. So that can go somewhere where there's a page that's a bit more narrow. How about that? Down there. So at this stage, I really think it's fun to add some paint to the pages and I've pulled out a few supplies, but definitely use whatever you have. I've pulled out my set of well-worn gold pans here. So these are Stationery Pal. I will try to leave as many links in the description box below as I can and also check out discount codes. I pulled out my uber well-worn watercolour paints and I particularly love these greens and yellows. I just love this set. It's got a great range of colours and I get enough pigment easily so it starts to work. It doesn't take too long to get going. I've also pulled out a couple of my waterbrush pens in greens because I felt like it. I've got some more of those pencils. So these are the ones that are watercolour pencils, again in muted greens and greys to go with that palette that we thought about at the beginning. And I've got a nice fat brush from Zen Art Supplies and another 
big chunky brush. So again, without too much thinking, which is what I like, I'm going to go in with some of those greens. So it is nothing more than sweeps of colour in whatever shade you like. Blend them, maybe not too much water, but maybe think about that palette that you originally envisaged. And I'm right-handed, so my sweeps tend to go like that. This is something I did a long time ago, feels like a long time ago, when I created journal spreads and I put just a background on a page and it breaks the page, it gets you going, makes you feel good, makes you feel more confident and it adds interest. So I've got something going on which is mirroring some of the colours there and I haven't lost visibility of the, the font and the text behind. Some of these papers are glossy so not as easy to do. I really love those greens. I like to sweep across a couple of them. I can have some lines. Just something. And it, you never know, we might cover some of this up. I started to do a bit of mark making. I made some pockets the other day. Did a bit of mark making on those. Like that, just wiggle. A bit like the sea. There are no rules, so whatever you feel like in that moment, dive in and do. Just a bit of space here, I think. Might encourage somebody to stick something on it all right. Of interest there. And try to spread it out a bit. Get something on the back of one of the pages. A rectangle there with some rounded corners. I'm going to go in with some gold, maybe get that on top. So there's no way that we could write a formula or an approach for doing all of this, but just making suggestions in that guide I hope will help you to make the most of your supplies and whatever you like doing. I think what I will do is add a few marks with one of my water brushes. Do this with a pencil or a pen. So you can see this colour is beautifully lining up with the botanicals behind. Another colour, just go roughly nearby, some little dashes there. My yellow pencil, just give that a little bit of a third colour in there. I'm not going to wet it to ignite the pigment, I'm just going to leave it. I like that yellow. So it's a really quick dabbing of watercolour and obviously you could do a lot more. What I'm also going to do is add some other paints with some texture as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of a vibrant colour with some metallic acrylic paints. In fact, these are some of the ones that I use when I make my collage paper. So I have a video on how I did that. I'm going to take a little bit of the gold and just dot it onto an acrylic block. And if you don't have an acrylic block, and if you do have an ink pad, you could dot the colour on the top of your ink pad lid and use that. And my top tip is don't let it dry. And if you do, biological washing powder will help you clean off your acrylic mat. A little bit of water on there and this hopefully will add some of that decadence to some of the pages so let's be really thoughtful about where we put it. Hmm. So I wonder if it's one that will grip to a glossy page. Shall we just dive in and do? Press it down and squidge. Dot. Now obviously this is going to give me issues in terms of drying, which is why I did my watercolour first. And it does have a grip. In fact if you press your acrylic block or ink pad lid down 
and lift it, you get some of those little veins in the paint. And of course you could do many more pages. I'm just trying to illustrate one of the techniques. Just a little bit of interest if you have acrylic paint. So that's a lot more delicate because it's a second stamp, but it just gives something down here. I'm getting some interesting lines. Let's go with the flow. I like that. It is about playing. This is all about enjoying ourselves. So I've actually dried this off with a heat gun because the acrylic was quite thick and it would have taken some time. And now what I want to do is just take a bit of bubble wrap and add some texture. I've chosen a lime green paint. This is an Arteza gouache colour. Again, you could use anything. I would say to include some paint, add some paint that's got some thickness to it just to make it a little bit easier Then it's not running between all of the bubbles in your bubble wrap. And I've chosen a colour that's bright and vibrant because I want to lift some of these pages a little bit and I just love lime green. So again this is going to be interesting because I will need these pages to dry. I'm just going to get some texture on and I can't believe how satisfying this stage of our process is. I love it. I'm not even mixing the colours. I'm going straight from the tube. It's just awesome. So maybe I can lift one of these pages. Yeah, let's add a bit on our collage. A little bit on our music paper. I've added a little bit more on some other pages. So that one we did before. So I dabbed quite a few times on this one so the bubble joined up so you've got more fill on this one but I've still got the texture and then I've just added a little bit because I think the green here works beautifully with the green here and the green on the inside. So I've got my bubble wrap done. Let's see how we're doing, what other suggestions we have. Probably just add a few splat dots and maybe some ready-drawn botanicals and then we can just do a tiny bit of stamping and that will be our base layer done. I'm going to add a little bit of texture just with a background stamp, just very lightly on a few pages, something like this or something like this. And so that it doesn't bleed, I'll use my archival ink. Don't need it to show itself unbelievably well. It certainly doesn't need to be on every page, but we're just layering up that background doesn't even need to be upright. Oh, I like that. Let's do a partial one. Wherever you feel like it. So the base layer's done. What we're going to do now is build out the pages. So this is our main course. And I literally work through using some of the ephemera I've already made, adding pockets, envelopes, tags, journal cards, and other things in interesting ways. So I have a stack of pockets and envelopes here, different designs, things I've made on my channel over the last, really over the last year or so. That's mostly pockets, seems to be envelopes in there, and I've, I've pulled out a stack of, of envelopes too. And I like to begin by working on pockets, but also working on the inside covers of the journal. So I think what I will do is start at the back, and I'm going to get some kind of flip-flap envelope mechanism going on here. So I want something that isn't going to dominate all of the page because I want to see the green coming through. That's got some nice papers on it, a little bit of washi, I like it, I like the neutrals in this. You could take forever deciding. I think the thing to do today is to crack on and then just make another. It's as simple as that. So I think I'll have the big one opening that way and a little one tucked inside. 
Which one do we want on top? Maybe this one because I like those colours. Some glue on the back of the flap of one of them. So these are just really simple envelopes that I've made and then collaged on the front. And I sit and do them when I feel like not really thinking very much, which is definitely some of the time. So if I put that there, then that's got plenty of space to open and we can get in there. If I do the same with this one and get some glue on the back of this, and I'm going to put that so that when it is all closed up, this is down a bit, a bit lower than this one, but it will also fold over. We can afford for it to be a little bit further out. I think I'll just go a little bit further, maybe to there. So I've still got some border here see, to be seen. Just tidy it up. I really like that. So I've got one on top of another. That will open. We can put things in there, which we will do. And I've got space to put stuff in there. In fact, I might decorate on top of here if I feel like it. I've got time. So I've got a flip flap at the back. And then I like to put a pocket at the front. And we have to choose. So this is my porthole pocket design, which I like. I think that gets a bit lost on here because this is green and this is green. That's too simple. That's too busy. That might go in an interior pocket. Again, that's simple. I'm going to use a simple pocket for another thing. Quite like the bird. That's good contrast and it's got that sort of nature theme. So I think I'm going to stick a porthole pocket on the front inside cover so I need glue over the whole of that and these were made so that I didn't have anything particularly special on the back so I'm perfectly happy just to glue that in and I think that looks fabulous and then I'm going to add just some simple pockets the most basic pocket I make just a simple pocket like this and I've got videos making all of these so they'll be in a playlist linked in the description box down below. I'm going to add something super simple. It's simple in pattern as well as design which is just making it very elegant because some of the, the rest of this is quite busy. So I think I've got, I've got a different design here that's got three compartments to it. I'm going to add these as flip outs with some washi tape. This is a great one, neutral colours and strong, so that's from the washi tape shop. I'm also going to go for my foil one because I just like the bling. So I'm going to add a pocket or two as flip out, so we need to find a suitable page. You'll feel that when you get to this stage, I think that it does speed up. That would work well on there, wouldn't it? So I need some washi on here yeah. so a nice wide piece and just run it up one side oops I'm touching the page there we go I remember doing this a while ago on a journal spread with some with I think it was a bird on the picture and it's just I love it I really enjoyed making that page I'm going to put this on right at the edge just about fits yeah that just about fits and then that will flip out like that it's just interesting if you wanted to you could add another piece of washi on the back there for strength which I think I might do I'll use the same washi I think I've got gold in this and gold on that little journal spot there measure and rip. So that's definitely a pocket we can use to put some interesting things in. So I've got a pocket that flips open and space to put things in there and I've got another design here which maybe could go flat. Where might that go? I think I can probably afford to lose a bit of Rupert and I don't mind it sticking out a bit, so I'm just going to glue this one on. 
Don't think that you have to limit what you're sticking on the shape of the page. You can go beyond it, obviously, if it still sticks within the boundary of your cover. So I really like that. Maybe we could go a bit lower. That gives us space to put things in up there. And I made these not too long ago. So these are pockets with space to journal on the back. So I don't want to stick these flat down. I need to find a space to put them in. And I do try with my folds to have spaces to put pockets in and then you can have beautiful stuff on the back. So have I got something with a space that it will tuck in? That could go in there. It will just about go. And the blue works really well with the blue over here. I'm also going to say that this is starting to feel chubby, so I may have to rein back in on some of the pockets that I'm adding. Although I do like, oh dear, I just do like them. It's as simple as that. And I'm going to pause after that and see what we've got left to do. One of the benefits of the guide is maybe you can look to see how much else you have left to do so you don't overfill it. Even a small piece like that can hold an envelope. So again, your page doesn't need to be as big as the item that you're adding. Press that down with a bit of space between it and the spine. Press that down. So I've got some envelopes in. It really is starting to have that interesting chubbiness. Right, I'm going to move on to tags. I've got a few of those behind me too. In fact, I've grabbed tags, journaling cards and page flips. So we might just go for all of them at once. See, it really is a lot easier when you get to this stage. The homework is the base layer. That's got some really nice dark colours and some botanical. So that might go. I think that can go over a page. So maybe that would be good just tucking over the top there. And fortuitously, this fold up on the middle page is holding it in just about. You could add a paper clip on the top there if you wanted, but I think I might try and get away with that. You can see how it really does speed up. I'm going to get something into our fold out pocket here. So maybe a tag, maybe a tag without, that's quite nice, isn't it? Without too much colour on it. So again, sticking to those themes. These were tags I made with book pages as a base. And then I did lots of different splatting and collage techniques on the top. I think that can go in my fold-out pocket. It's quite thick, so I'm going to have to be modest with the number of tags I add. What have I got as journaling cards? So I've got some faux vintage cards that I created with tissue paper on top to give it that faux vintage effect. That's quite a nice one, isn't it? And I also want to add a bird. That's nice because it doesn't have a tie, so there's a bit more space. Oops. So let's get a bird in here. I like that as a theme. Ooh, that would fit beautifully in our envelope. Obviously well planned. We don't have to fill every pocket because whoever has this will enjoy filling it too. That just works perfectly in there. Very natural colours. Do we have another? So this is a vintage style one that I did with some beautiful images of a lady on the back and just made into faux vintage postcards. I think that one might have a home in here if it will fit. Oh yes, that fits in there. In fact, I think I might have the lady's face. I think that works really well. And then anything else you want to add, so maybe collage strips you could add as belly bands or pre-made journal pages. I don't think we need those today or indeed clusters. So I'm going to rein back and not add absolutely everything. What I'm going to do is take stock and then move on to the top level just a few little details to finish it off. And to bring this all beautifully together, I have some suggestions for top level detail. 
So we've had starter, main course, we're on the dessert. I don't propose today to do all of these things, but the sorts of things you could add are labels, images from books, digital images if you want, dictionary definitions. Children's dictionaries work really well because the font is really beautiful. You can make some mini notebooks, you could write quotes in your journal, you could add some marks or splat paint. There's a whole list here for you to choose from. I'm going to just simply add a tiny bit of that foiled washi, maybe a music one, maybe a little stamp that I've painted, just a few elements. But obviously carry on as much as you want to and go until you feel there's just enough. I think there is a temptation to keep going forever because you just get into the zone, or I do. Let me know if that happens to you. So do you have a method for decorating your journal? I would be very, very interested to know what method you use, if indeed you have one. And are you going to have a go at making one and using your own basic supplies and doing it in your own style. One decorated journal, 10 page ideas. Check out my playlist in the video description box below for lots of tutorials making pockets, envelopes and tags and I hope to see you soon.